So we've gotten to the point where we had done clustering on the longitude and latitude data for stations. And then we pulled out the information from one of those clusters for actual weather information. And we did a linear regression to get seasonal variability. Uh, so we basically fit a trigonometric function to the variations of the weather over the course of the year to give us how much the weather or the temperature changes between the uh, summer and the winter. And now what I want to do is kind of the final step in this. I want to take all the data that we have here together and use it to build a uh, another set of data that then we can run clustering on to see if we can get the clustering to kind of find climate zones for us. Okay, so in order to do this, the first thing I'm going to have to do is a little bit of refactoring where I have to take some of the information that we did in here, our linear regression, and I need to pull that out into its own method. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to comment out some of the plotting that we had because I'm about to destroy the variables or at least move the variables that it uses inside of a scope. Uh, let's see, cluster stations was that. I am actually going to, let's do this. So we're going to def a function. Um, calc seasonal var and it I am going to assume that we pass in a data frame here and it's going to give us back a double that is the uh, seasonal variability in there and uh, I'll go ahead and close that down here which will still not be happy uh, data frame is actually just part of spark sql underscore okay so i get a data frame and there are a number of things that i want to do uh, you know, with this i want to just calculate that seasonal variability so first i need to attach the day of year information um, so this, I'm going to assume that the data frame that I pass in here is already down to whatever cluster we're looking at. Uh, and so this here will just be df. I will add in the column for the day of year, the day of year sine, the day of year cosine. And a, then I will run the linear regression on those two values, just like we did before. Um, and turns out that I don't need to run the linear fit. And we were doing this just so we could plot so that you could see that the linear regression looked right. We're not going to do that here. Instead, what I want to return is the size of the variability. So earlier we had been printing out the coefficients from the model. Of uh, that's the magnitude of the cosine term and the magnitude of the sine term, the value that I want to give back is actually the square root of the sum of the squares of those values. And I'm not going to care about the uh, intercept here. Let's see, coefficients is a vector. Do they happen to give me any type of, I can do this manually, looks like that's what we're going to get to do. So I'm going to take coefficients sub 1 times the linear reg model dot coefficients sub 1 plus, and then I'm going to copy this because I want the same thing, whoops, those should actually probably be zeros because this is zero indexed. So I'll change the first ones. So 0 times 0 plus 1 times 1, and let's put a dot here with math.square root. Okay, 
And so now I've taken that code that had been we had been using to uh, do our linear regression and I have put it away in a separate function. And the reason for doing this is because I want another function here that is going to be the one that actually gives me all the data that I want for a cluster that kind of is, I'll call it the climate data. It's, it's, it's going to be significant information from the full year for that cluster. And so we'll call it calc cluster data. And what I want to do here, I'm going to pass in a data frame and a cluster, which is an integer value. And it's going to give me back a cluster data. Okay, we're not going to get this written in this video. We'll have to come back and do that. But we can talk about what we want inside of our cluster data. And I can come up here and I can add a case class for it. So, what do I want in the data associated with each cluster? This is, as I said, basically climate data. Um, I could, because it might be helpful for coloring or whatnot, have an integer value for the number of that cluster. To plot it, I'm going to need the latitude and the longitude, both of which are doubles. I'm also, uh, because it turns out that our clusters are very different sizes, I want to have some indication of the spread in that. So I'll call one the lat std devs. So the latitude standard deviation is a double and the lawn standard deviation is a double. Okay, what are other things? Well, how about the average annual value for Tmax? And similarly, the average annual value for Tmin. Those are, are useful kind of climate level variables for me. And once again, they will be averaged over the, the whole year. The deviation in the, the, Mac, the T max and the T min. So T max, and actually I am just going to do, I'm going to simplify my variable names a little bit here. So the T max standard deviation is a double, and the T min standard deviation is a double. I would also like to know on average how much precipitation they get because that's a, a value that's in my data set. And then the two values that we uh, that we used our linear regression for, which are, in this case, actually we only did it once, but we're going to do it twice. We're going to do a T max seasonal variation, again a double, and a T min seasonal variation is a double. Okay. That's a fair bit of data, and if we could get these values calculated for each cluster and then use those for uh, plotting them up and for running another round of clustering algorithms that will try to figure out which climate zone they're in. So we'll come back and we'll continue working on this in the next video.